It all started on a comfortable evening around the end of November. I'd been messaging a friend who technically was supposed to be paying attention in class, but he wasn't. And because of time zones, uh, it was in the evening for me. This friend, we can call him Patrick. Patrick, we were just talking. And suddenly, another classmate of ours, we can call this classmate Chad. Chad had come up behind Patrick and started reading our texts. And after a few minutes, uh, Patrick had told me of what Chad had said about me. And honestly, it had surprised me because it had been about two years since I had moved back to China. And I hadn't really been close with him ever. And because there's a lot of cussing involved, um, I will be simplifying the cuss words into peanut butter for the sake of your discretion and the sake of my reputation with my teachers. <laughs> <laughs> Chad had said, wow, she can't even peanut butter spell. What a stupid chink. She's some peanut butter that lives in China that nobody loves. This isn't the only time something like this has happened to me, although it's not usually as direct. Maybe it'll be when I come out of class and a classmate will chase me down and ask me, do Chinese people actually eat cats and dogs? Do you own pets? Can you own pets? Or maybe it'll be when I pack my lunch and instead of it being a sandwich as it normally is, it might be something that my dad had made the night before and all my classmates will crowd around me. What is that? Does that taste good? I've had full grown adults have conversations with me where they say something along the lines of, you must really hate America because you're from a communist country. And I'd have to awkwardly explain to them that um, I was actually born in America and also raised there. Not really, but all right. Sometimes I get absolutely floored by the things that people say. So here's a little public service announcement for everyone out there. My culture might not be the same as yours, but that doesn't make me any less of a person than you. The, skin, the color of my skin might not be the same as yours, but that doesn't make me any weirder than you. And I'm not restricted to the stereotypes of my culture, just like how you are. I don't need you to come up to me and pull your eyes back like this to remind me of how I look. And I don't need you to come up to me and say ching 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 chong and then expect me to laugh about it because it's not. I don't need you to isolate me from the place that I always thought I'd have a home in. When people ask me, where are you from? I always gave the general answer, well, I was born in America, but my family is Chinese. It avoids the question that people ask of, yeah, but where are you really from? Nowadays, when people ask me, where are you from? I'm scared to say that I'm Chinese. And one day when I said, when I realized that I was hesitating and not willing to say that I'm from China or I live in China now, or I'm Chinese, mm -hmm. I was furious with myself. How dare I? be afraid to say that I'm Chinese, but I can't help it. I'm scared of the jokes that will be made at my expense if I say that I'm Chinese. I'm scared of the things and the, th the things that people will say to me and the slurs that people will call me if I say that I'm Chinese. I'm scared of the people that won't leave room for conversation, who sound so sure of themselves, who say that I am brainwashed and I am a lost cause and won't listen to anything that I say. I'm scared to say that I'm Chinese. Sometimes it can be hard to be open about your identity, especially if someone is always pushing you down and finding it odd and eccentric. But some, sometimes, sometimes places that lack representation can be made up for in unity. I used to live in a place 
where the population itself was not boasting in numbers. So most of the people that lived where I used to live was white. And looking back on it now, my family was in the center of the Asian community in my city. I'd come home and there would, be, there would always be talk about who did this or who said that or whatnot. Sometimes it'd be about what happened to the Lee family in the next city over, or maybe it'd be about the Jing family who were having a dinner party and we were invited. Or maybe a new Asian newcomer had come to town and we were planning a party to welcome them and introduce them to everyone else in the community. It was home. I could sit in my library and listen to the babble of Chinese and feel like home. These times taught me to love my culture and who I am. So, you now, so now all of you have sat here and wondered why I've been talking about myself for this long. I can't speak for all the people of color out there, and I can't speak for all of the American-born Chinese people out there. But I can understand how lonely it can feel and how it might feel like the whole world is on your back. When you're a kid, your entire school or your neighborhood or your city is basically your entire world, and that's it. So if you're, if someone's bullying you or discriminating against you, it's going to feel like everyone is against you. I had a friend who taught me something really important. This friend told me that sometimes we don't have to raise our voices against the people that are always trying to push us down, always feeling disgusted about our culture or anything. Sometimes we can celebrate our culture and embrace it. And that can also be a form of fighting against all of this hate. COVID-19 isn't the only virus that's been spreading around. Hate is also a virus. And if we don't do something about it, it's going to slowly seep into all of our lives. Because people of color might be wearing masks, protecting and protesting against this hate right now, but it's going to end up affecting everyone. So why don't we agree to disagree if we must, leave room for conversation, Educate ourselves before assuming. Educate ourselves before assuming. Leave room for discussion and allow each other the dignity for each other's thoughts and opinions. And have pride in our culture, our race, our heritage, religion, gender, sexuality, anything. Thank you very much.